All right. Good morning. I think. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I, I can hear you. I hope everybody else can hear you. Uh, let's just uh, get the chat up. See if that works this week. I did check it. Ooh. Blimey. This machine is struggling. <laughs> <laughs> It's crazy, really. I was thinking about this earlier. We're uh, we're looking at these, you know, ancient machines that are just trying to drag every bit of performance out of them just to make a few sprites move around a screen, and we're, we're communicating that, you know, via. I, I'm. I mean, I'm using a. Well, let me just turn that off a bit. <clears throat> I'm using a what six-year-old gaming laptop, uh, which is taking what four video feeds in, including one from a video <laughs> conference. Uh, multiple audio feeds yeah. <laughs> muxing it all together and then broadcasting it out to to multiple streams it's uh it's been it's mad really um there you go I tell you, the other thing actually i don't know if i've mentioned this before but one of the other things that that fascinates me about about this particular machine or this family of machines this uh the 2650 the signetics 2650 is that the 2650 chip is essentially um an ibm 1130 which was like a desk t the, uh, sort of office sized mainframe computer of of the mid 1960s right oh, so th th this is a little test uh derek's joining the room so uh -huh, cool as soon as derek speaks he might appear in the window hi derek you there hi there hey how's that <laughs> excellent hey Fantastic. Well done. Yes. <laughs> I hope this is working. Um, uh, Mike from uh, yeah. Extra Life is here as well. Hey, Mike. That's cool. Okay. So I guess I can turn off my YouTube stream. Yes. Yeah, do that. Or at least mute right. it. How are you doing, Derek? I'm good, thanks. And you? Yeah. All right. Not bad. Not bad. I, uh, and you? Lee's here on the call as well. So. Hello, yes, I saw Lee. Good morning, Lee. Hello to you. Yeah, How are you doing today? It's all a bit first thing in the morning. <laughs> oh, boy. Hey, it's 11 o'clock there. For you, no, I it? know. I know. It's disgraceful. <laughs> That's funny. I was just saying, Derek, um, I don't know how much you know about this, but presumably you do, that the, the Signetics 2650 is actually an IBM 1130 mainframe in a chip. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know much about a uh, IBM mainframe. Um, I mean, the the processor is often described as a my uh, mini computer like yeah. machine. What that means, I I really don't know. Um, no, that's right. I've I've seen it described like that as well. And but I think what it means is because if I understand this correctly and you know that uh, there's not an awful lot of information about this out there but from from what i did read um when signetics decided to to design a chip to kind of compete with the other um microprocessors that were on the market at the time in the early 70s they hired an ibm guy who was responsible for the architecture of the ibm 1130 and he took that architecture with him and essentially miniaturized it and that that's essentially it's the same computer the same number of registers and the same kind of instruction set as that ibm 1130 which i think came out in like 63 or 65 or something like that and i've seen photos of it and it is it's basically a, a mini computer in a desk it's built into a desk with kind of storage units you know external to that um but yeah that's kind of right. i think that's the history of it so yeah from like a business class mini computer in the 60s to a single processor in the 70s and then by the end of the 70s it was such a commodity item it was being put into games consoles <laughs> <laughs> yeah just wonder what that mainframe could actually do <laughs> right I, mean, I don't think anybody anybody attempted to uh yeah to program defender or anything on it <laughs> back in the day although you know space war was you know was it came out on a was it digital um, PDP-8 or something originally, wasn't it? Something like right. that. One of the digital, one of the deck uh, mainframe computers. 
which I guess is the first true <coughs> arcade game. Um, but yeah, so so I want to talk about Space Squadron this morning. Um, but it's because I just acquired it um, and I don't know anything about it really. Um, so this is what it looks like. It's quite a nice, um, quite a nice copy of it actually. Um, thin instruction booklet, just a couple of pages. Um, and you can see the opening screen there. And so one of the things that um, is interesting about this, well, there's a couple of things that are interesting about this, actually. First of all, this is cartridge number five on the uh, on the Hanimex. It never came out for the Emerson. So the the parent console never had this game. And so I don't know where this game came from. Um, it, it, it appears on a number of different clones. Um, the MP, was it the MPT-03 um, and the Schmidt, um, but never on the Emerson. So I don't know who made it. Um, I don't think there's anything associated with it. I mean, it's still copyright UA limited, which all these games are. Um, came out in 1982, as I guess pretty much all of the games did. Um, but yeah, this was Cartridge 5 on the Hanimex. And the other interesting thing about it is, I don't know if you can see, we can probably see from the, if I move out of the way a little bit, you can see from the box art behind me, the artwork is really good. It's compared with the artwork we've seen on previous games, the artwork on uh, on this is actually really nice. So whoever made they've it. Done, they've done a good job of uh, also not making it obviously ripped off of something exactly yeah <laughs> yeah someone's actually spent some time on this and it's not just it's not just the kind of sketchy nature of it that this is proper you know inked and filled in and and everything but it's there's like a there's like an overlay of additional graphical effect on it as well so mm. you know you've got these circles in the corner point up up here and you've got you kind of read out and then if i move out of the way a little bit or maybe you can see on here there's sort of you know, graphical elements along the bottom here, like a line. Looks very cool. Yeah, it's impressive. I, I do suspect, though, um, about an equivalent amount of time was spent on the artwork as on the game. So <laughs> 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 let's uh, let's check it out, shall we? Um, so uh, yeah, let, let me just uh, let me just show uh, what we're playing on, as as we always do. Um, let's just get the cable out of the way. So if I press, uh, what is it? That? Yeah, there we go. So here it is. There's our little Hanimex HMG 2650 um, with the with the game in it. And you can see from the label on the game. I don't think this has really ever been used. Um, I've also um, got the trusty Atari 2600 over here just in case we get um, bored of playing Space Squadron, because it hasn't really got very much depth to it, I don't think, we can always flick over and see what an equivalent Defender clone was like on the on the Atari. Um, I don't know if you want to show the Hanimex up that much, though. We'll, we'll see. Um, I was also thinking of, there is a, there is a, a Defender variant um, on the um, video pack as well, uh, the Odyssey, Odyssey 2, as it... Um, as it was in the States, uh, called Freedom Fighter, which I've also got, but uh, it was a bit much effort to kind of get it out of the uh, stack and bring it over here so we could actually play it. But I might do a separate video on that. There's some quite interesting video pack games. I do like the video pack. But um, but yeah, I guess the, the real comparison is between this Space Squadron and, and Defender, or Defender 2, there was two Defenders on the, uh, on the Atari. But maybe we'll look at that in a bit. Anyway, so let's uh, let's have a look at this. So I'm going to restart the game. It shouldn't really have a white background. I think it. Let me let's not forget to um. Yeah, switch us back over on the video. There we go. Oh no. Ah, oh, what? What's going on here? Oh dear, I've got no return on the um. Has my hotkey just disappeared? That's weird. Hang on a sec. Uh, oh, there we go. Um, 
need to get rid of that. There we go. Well, the colors have changed. Yes, the colors have changed. Yeah, so it doesn't normally have a white background. Um, I think it either goes white or glitches white occasionally. Um, okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you reset it from the start, this is what this is what you start with. So um, you do have a number of different game options. Well, two, you can switch between them. Uh, also, if uh, if anyone if anyone's listening and and the game sound is too loud, tell tell me. Uh, just put a message in and let, let us know because I know the game sound sometimes comes through way louder than our voices do. Um, so we'll we'll see when we get into this. But yeah, there's, there's there's two skill levels basically. So we're gonna start with skill level one. Skill level one is brutal. Um, skill level two is completely impossible. So let's, uh, let's give this a go. So you hit start and nothing happens until you press a button. Uh, okay. So I'm, as soon as I press a button. There's my ship. And it looks a bit like Defender. It's interesting that their, um, their bullets have a range. Yeah, which is good actually because it's quite yeah. hard to avoid. So. Mm. So what can we see here? We've got a score. Oh yeah, let's start if I press the button. We've got a score in the top left, and then we've got kind of a radar. So that plus is, is my ship. Uh, and then we've got the high score on the right hand side. So I have oh, that just uh, materialised right into me. Uh, and we've got my ship, and as I as I reach the edges of that sort of inner uh, inner column, the the um, world at the bottom of the screen starts to scroll. I can't fly into the object at the bottom. That's as low as I can get. So I can't go any lower than that. I can't crash into the ground. Okay, that's so that's when it switches at the end. Let's start another one. Is there an objective, or is it literally just shoot the aliens? As far as I can tell, it is just shoot the aliens to get a high score. There's no humans to pick up, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. that are carried off by aliens. Oh. Um, there are two. What's the, uh, what's the responsiveness like on the? Uh... It's it's okay. It's not you know you know how good it was um, on uh, uh, catch rats. Yeah. Uh, it's not like that. It it doesn't feel as as immediate and as and as mm -hmm. uh, you know well sorted as that. Let the ship looks like it's got inertia when you move. It sort of accelerates as you move away. So does that feel laggy? It, it feels slow. It feels yeah. like, and it, and also like when you do get up to speed. So that you've got inertia there, and then when you do get yeah. up to speed, I think possibly as more aliens materialise, it seems to slow down a little bit as huh. well. Sorry, I'm not paying attention. I was watching the smoothness of the scrolling at the bottom. <laughs> Which I mean, it's, it's, the scrolling is quite nice. If you look, mm. it's not the the blocks are coming in block by block on the left hand mm -hmm. side. Oops. But the scrolling itself is actually smooth. Mm. So this is like this is a step effect as the, mm. as the new graphics come in. And and there's two different kinds of aliens. So there's there's these ones, which I think they're called mutants, and then there's aliens, which are the ones that are shooting. So it's only that that type that shoots. Yeah, that's interesting. You know, as soon as I just destroy one, another one will will materialize, and it, it doesn't look like they show up on the um, on the radar. I think it's only the mutants that show up on the radar. So there should be a mutant. Oh, there, that's that one that's showing up. Oh, crikey! 
Playfield seems quite small. I wonder whether that's actually just because of modern games rather than that it actually is. Yeah, certainly. It feels quite cramped once you've got, mm. you know, three or so aliens in there. Yeah, the, the, there's mutants flicker as well, which I think... Mm. I mean, Derek, you might be able to shed some light on this. Is this is this a bit of a graphical trick going on here to get multiple sprites on the same row? Possibly. I would think so. My my understanding of the um, the, the, the process of chip in, in this game mm. is that um, it's only actually got the four objects and unlike the uh, chip in the data in the database, mm. they can't be reprogrammed further down the screen. Oh, okay. Yeah, so probably what you've got there with the flickering is on one frame it's in one position and in the next frame it's in another. Yeah. And that, that's okay on this game because they look kind of jittery and like they're sort of you know the mutants i mean the, the mutants in the original defender were kind of, kind of once, once they'd got a, a human and lifted it to the top of the screen they turned into mutants didn't they and they were really kind of jittery and flickery and sort of jittered about a lot, so it's almost like the programmer has, has used that fact to mm. allow more on screen so that's quite a limitation then. So for the fact that the fact that this was an upgrade to the to the um, APBS architecture in the database and the other things, um, actually it had the limitation that only allowed four swipes on screen without the ability to adjust them as the uh, as you went down. Uh, the, that's my understand. That's my understanding of the data sheet. You're right. Now that screen that that screen that you've got there. Mm. Um, it looks like it's just a simple coloring version that's going on. The, uh, the the database and all of those clones have got a an output bit which just inverts the color, all of the colors coming out of the video. Okay. Uh, I think that's what's happening there. Mm. You mean when it switches from the white background to the black black black, black background? Yes, yeah, and all it looks to me like the uh, the the colours at the bottom, the the oh, purple yeah, changes yeah. to green, of course. Uh, of course. and the cyan changes to red. Okay, yeah, let's, let's see what happens. If I just kill myself a couple of times. <laughs> I, I will have a go at playing this properly. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were. Chris. <laughs> I thought you were. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so there you go. Those are the inverted colours. Yeah, green, red. The shadows have changed it from blue to yellow. Mm. Or the yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, I do. I do have. Um, I, I kind of previewed this a little bit by accident earlier because I can't remember what my key setups are. But um, oh, not that one. There, I do have a map. Ooh. So that that is actually <laughs> a map of the landscape. Is that what that is? Yeah, yeah. You, I know you saw it earlier, and it was yeah, really yeah, yeah. confusing. Yeah, no. That I've uh, I, where I had the um the chess overlay last week. I I replaced it with this. So that's so that's the map. We can see there's kind of there's there's two city sections and two mountain sections. I guess. Um, maybe the Alps on the left and the Himalayas in the middle there. Uh, <laughs> But, but not that that has any bearing on the game whatsoever, though, because yeah, yeah, there's, there's no there's nowhere to get to. But it would be interesting yeah. to see if it does scroll round. So if you leave the out there, and fly this way, you get over the Himalayas. And here's another city. Uh, and there's there we go. That's, that's the Alps again. Right. Some 
of those some of those shots are fast and and have a longer range than others. It's quite it's not very um, consistent. You see that like a, in, as soon as I destroy one of those minions, another one shows up. Sometimes it might be best just to leave it. I think I get ten I get ten for the aliens and five for the mutants. The uh, the thrust animation on the engine is that only occurring when you're moving left or right? Yeah. And the, and the sound effect as well. I don't know if you can hear the sound. Right. Yeah, just the sound effect. It's a nice little detail. Yeah. There doesn't seem to be a shooting or explosion sound. Is that just because we can't hear it on the zoom? Yeah, I think so. Can you hear that? It's actually quite a nice sound. I did notice as well, actually, that the um, the audio stream on, you know, the audio on this, the game audio on the stream, I think, is also going through the Zoom call, and Zoom is trying to suppress it because it, uh, it was very, right, it was yeah. choppy. Yeah. Obviously, Zoom is trying to mute people that aren't speaking. You know, Especially don't really want, you don't really want the game sound. You don't really want the game sound coming through the zoom anyway, because then you'd have it twice, wouldn't you? Yeah. Well, I I think that is what's actually happening. Oh, uh, but it is just suppressing it. Yeah, which is why it doesn't come through for me. Um, I'm not just, yeah. Come on then, Chris. You need to get to a hundred. Right. <laughs> Also a little bit. Got one eye. Um, oh dear. Oh, I've got to a hundred. <laughs> I've got another light. <laughs> and I've got a whole other game mode to play as well, which is lightning prospect. <laughs> oh. Okay. Right. Come on then. Let's see. So that's annoying. Like you get away from it, and then it <laughs> sends one. Right in there. So what's the um, the timeline uh, on this uh, regarding development versus Defender on the Atari? Were they like exactly the same time, or is this um, oh, another inspired by the arcade? And yeah. So there were two. There were two Defenders on the Atari. Um, mm -hmm. It's worth looking up. This this was released in '82. Yeah. Um, as I think, yeah, as I said, pretty much all of these games were. Thirty-five. That's terrible. Um, so it's worth just just checking to see when the, the, the defenders were released on the Atari. Mm -hmm. um, because the first one, I think, was. Uh, I, th I think the, the, the Defender Two is, is generally hailed as a classic. It's really, it's really a remarkable achievement. Actually. Um, but also, I, I'm pretty sure it uses a, uh, a rampage on the car. Mm -hmm. so, I, I don't remember playing Defender 2 on 2600. Oh. Unless that's the only one I've played, and I just possibly it was the two. It's um, yeah, it's worth, it's worth having a little look to see when Defender 2 came out. Uh. I'm sick of uh. There we go, one three five. Okay. okay. Defender two aka Stargate, uh, released in nineteen eighty four for the twenty six hundred. Oh wow. Okay, so not that long after. Yeah, so my, my my copy is just called Defender Two. So yeah, copyright nineteen eighty one Williams. That's the original arcade, and then mm -hmm. copyright mm -hmm. 
this version, 1987, Atari Corporation. Hey. Hello. Hey. Just passing through, but <laughs> hello. Do you want to have a go? Sure. What are we doing? What are we doing? Uh, so I hit start, and then you, you, when you press any button, the game starts, and then you die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, that was lucky. You can move left and right, and then the, the landscape scrolls. Okay, okay anyway. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, gra grab Paradise City. Yay, go do that. That's a good idea. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so that lasted all about seconds of interest. So uh, are you going to show us mode two then? Uh, I am. Oh. I, I am. <laughs> but as you know, we have this issue at the moment where. Oh, hang on, he's back. So, what do you need? Need to, oh yeah, okay. He needs to find a lead. What's the leads box? <laughs> there'll, there'll be one in there somewhere. We have all the leads. No one else in the world has got any leads because we have one. Bit, one of the things that's a bit strange is that, well, first of all, the explosion animation is the same as the materializing animation. Right. Um, and secondly, I um, heard about the paradise and I'm again. Okay. And um, secondly, when, when they materialize, uh, the materialize animation plays, and then it takes like, like another second before the beauty mm. turns up. You mm. kind of, you know, you'd want it to just be there straight away, wouldn't you? <laughs> God. It's bizarrely addictive though. I mean, as, as bad as this is, like, it, it does make you feel like you can't, you can't possibly be this bad at something. You are. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. You should see me playing Ghouls and Goblins. Ghosts and Goblins. Yeah. Oh, so there's, um, so there's Ghosts and Goblins. Ghouls and Ghosts. Ghouls and Ghosts, that's right, yeah. So Ghosts and Goblins is the first one. I'm so bad at that game. I love it, and I can literally last <laughs> one minute. And then I remember watching someone's playthrough, and I thought, I've never seen any of these parts of the game. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> Did you see that? Just outrunning the bullets. Well, no, just the, the the rapid fire of the. Yeah. Oh god. So this is this is their game mode two. Oh right. Yeah, I just switched to game mode two. Oh whoa. <laughs> okay. As if as if your ego wasn't sufficiently dented from playing <laughs> game mode one for. Because it was clearly so easy yeah, before. That's right. Ah. Oh. We thought we'd give you a challenge. This is not... <laughs> So the um so it's just so unresponsive. That's the uh, the fundamental issue is that moving is really just so sluggish. Mm. You know, everything else has speeded up in game mode two, but I haven't. <laughs> I'm like, honestly, it's like I mean, this is the wrong. This is the wrong air. This is the wrong craft for this mission. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm flying a bomber of some kind. It's like <laughs> I'm the Battle of Britain in a Blenheim. Well, I think you'd be pretty gutted as well that uh, the rest of your squadron just left you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's supposed to be space squadron. <laughs> Yeah! <laughs> Who the flip is everyone? I know! 
It is Space Squadron, but we're just going to send the ships in one at a time. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh dear, Parker's bought it. <laughs> send in Charlie. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't been left right, so this, this is me full, full chat. Run away! Get little reverse pot shots off. <laughs> yeah, I knew you were coming. So you laugh at um, how difficult uh, level 2 is, but you're actually equally good at level 1 and 2. <laughs> it's the wrong <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Maybe there's just more things to shoot so you just get more yeah, score. Yeah, right. It's a target-rich environment. As the end. Yes. <laughs> so... Draggy and slow. Mm. Look at me. Look at that. Yeah. <sighs> like I'm. Oof. Well, you're just a sitting duck, aren't you? That's what it should be called. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Should I do one more? I think I'm done. I think we should see. Uh... So, can you easily switch over to so, Defender? Um. I relatively easily. So w when when it's plumbed into the AV stack normally, I literally hit a button mm -hmm. and I can flick mm -hmm. between. Well, I have twenty consoles plumbed in yep. here. Well, actually, no, it's not true. I have twelve permanently plumbed in, plumbed in, and others kind of on a on a on a, a guest. I have guest inputs <laughs> on composite and HDMI. Um, when a console comes to visit. Yeah, but um, but what I what I so I'm going to have to basically. Um, disconnect the Hanamex and connect the um, the Atari into the same uh, mm -hmm. connections, which will yeah, take a few couple of minutes. Um, but I feel like we've seen all that Space Squadron can uh, yeah, provide. I think we have. I think we have. I think I don't think there's anything else to it. There's not even a pause feature. You know, like some of these games have got a pause on the right con right um, <laughs> controller. I tell you what, though, before we do leave it, just. Um, because, because Derek, you were, you left Vault Mace when you were in the process of designing Vault Mace's Defender variant, weren't you? So I wonder how, whether this, what you think of this, that was actually released on the Hanamex. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty good. I don't know, don't know why it doesn't go go down into the. Uh, into the cities and mountains and things. Yeah. Um, I mean, I seem to recall in the original Defender that was a fairly large part of the game. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's kind of on on a par with uh, with what I was doing. Um, my my recollection of that was yeah pretty hazy. Uh, I honestly don't don't even recall exactly how far I got with it. I was probably probably just got as far as uh, looking at um, how how you would actually generate the necessary graphics on the screen before actually trying to create a game for it. And it was I, I don't think I was working on that when I left. It was uh, more a case that I was moved on to do something else oh, okay so one thing i need to do actually before um i think i need to just because i remember last time we did this with the uh, missile command didn't we and you couldn't actually see the bottom of the screen fully so it's because oops i need to change the so here we go, it's a bit of a seeing behind the wizard's curtain here. There we go. Yeah, the, the resolutions are slightly different, so I just need to recenter the, the image. 
but there we go that's defender 2 um, so I can let's just switch over oh, no see I always get that wrong there we go so so there's the uh, 2600 with its defender 2 cartridge in it original cart um, and original CX40 joystick although I haven't actually painted the uh, bezel on that bit of an oversight uh, that's why I don't get it right again oh, I did okay <laughs> So here we actually have Defender. Ah, and this is ah, this is ah. It changed into a mutant just slightly before it got to the top of the screen, didn't it? There. Whoops. Ah, did I just hyperspace? Lose humans. Lose another human. What are the uh, ah. pulsing square things? So the pulsing square things are the stargates. Right. So this, yeah, this is. So um, Williams released a, a second version of Defender uh, called Stargate. Oh dear! <laughs> I've only saved three guys. <laughs> but you know, oh. I think those things are called glitters in the original. So do you have to lift those guy the guys up, or is it, or is it you just defend no, them? No, you just defend them. You just defend right. them. But there you go. If I fly, if I come across a Stargate, I'll fly into it. Mm. The, the, the video just cuts out, actually. I don't know if that's happening for you as well. No, it doesn't. Yeah. There, just cut out again. Just, uh, yep, cuts out. It keeps cutting out quite hmm. frequently. It doesn't seem to be cutting out on the screen. It's probably just in my stack. Oh, okay. Just saved it. So there's a Stargate. If I fly into it. Right. It just transports you to somewhere else on the map. To the other Stargate, yeah. I think every oh, every map has got two Stargates and you can jump between them. Okay. So how does the feel of the ship... I mean, obviously, it just seems much more responsive. Yeah. Yeah, the, I mean, the limiting factor here really is the joystick rather than the game. Yeah, sure. I mean, you see how nimble I am. Ah, uh, image the video just caught, cut out. I think mm. I think I might be um, a little little short on power to try to video um, convert. It's coming across okay to us. Uh, I wonder what's going on there. Sometimes Is it on your projector? Yeah, I suspect it's the. Um, well, I don't know actually. Ah, missed it. Is he gonna die? Yes, he's gonna die. Damn it. Um, uh, oh, just cut out there again. So you can see like how much more expansive it is as well, right? You know. You know. Oh the ship, the ship is and the aliens are also much smaller in the playfield. Yeah. Um so it just it just seems like there's much more space. Well, I mean, there is more space, I suppose. It didn't just seem there is, there is. The resolution is different. Oh, oh there's the... the other game was I, up. I've got um, I've got smart bombs as well, but I don't, I don't know how to deploy them. Obviously, I've only got one fire button. I've got a, I've got a feeling. That... Is it the fire button on the other? 
the other joystick. I think it's more likely like a difficulty button or something. No. Might be. I haven't got a joystick plugged into the other four. Mm. Ah, damn it! That was doing quite well then. Yeah. So that's that's. Uh, what, what do we say? When did this come out? Eighty four. Look, nineteen eighty four. Yeah. Defender two. Yeah. So this was a couple of years after the Hanimax. But it's it's a whole different proposition, isn't it? This is so much yeah. so much more um, capable hardware. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, the hardware the hardware is is contemporary with the Hanimax. It's not as if this machine came out later. It came out mm. earlier, actually. Obviously, it's a completely different architecture. But I think by by this point, you know, what programmers were able to get out of you know out of the machine. Um, especially with you know sort of um, extra extra RAM and capability mm. on the cartridge. So probably um, when you get lots and lots of coders that are on the same platform and they're all discovering tricks and they're sharing the tricks and they're yeah, That's it. you're just going to get more. You're just going to learn more and more out of the platform, aren't you? From yeah. So I guess I guess also that's kind of oh can I pick him up ah come on <gasps> Oof. there we go <laughs> nice, nice catch sir <laughs> so if I was a pro like so one thing to say about Defender I mean D Defender to me and I, I think a lot of a lot of teenagers in the arcade back in the day Defender was the game mm -hmm. um, like it was hard and the best players were the most revered. Um, and you know, every arcade that had a defender machine had a had a you know a handful of really really top notch defender players who could who could you know play for a, for an hour or more on a ten p. <laughs> um, and I, yeah screen just cut out. Uh, and there's a bunch of those there there's a certain number of tactics that they used to used to employ uh, for one thing they would they would wait for um, aliens to lift um, humans off the ground and then shoot the aliens and catch the humans and ca mm. carry the humans with them um, partly because the humans were safer huh. um, underneath your ship Right, right. And also because you've got um, a cumulative bonus for, for dropping them back on the on the landscape again afterwards. Huh. Oh. I think someone's about to enter the Zoom call. Hey. I, I've just let you in. I've just seen. Okay. All right, well... Yeah, thank you. I'll see you soon. Is that Flinny trying to join the Zoom call? Yeah. I think it's called PogChamp Rabbit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, so yeah, it's quite a difference, isn't it? Mm. So yeah, so that that point about um. Oh. Hello. Oh, whoa, whoa. You've got a bunch of voices in the background there, Flynn. Can you go somewhere quiet? Hi. Of course, when I have what? when I have a human under slung underneath me, the human is not safer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The human is at risk. <laughs> um, I don't think there's any other games. It's just a straightforward single player game version on this. Ray. Hi, Flynn. I'm in quiet. <laughs> That's cool. Can you see what's happening? Almost. 
we've shifted over to playing defender now. Or I have. So can you put the humans down on any of the human pads? I, I think you just you just drop it down, drop them down into the. Uh, I don't know, actually. I haven't tried it on this uh, this version. But in the original, you can just drop them down any, anywhere. Mhm. Mm ah. Oh. You won't have seen that, but the um, the, the screen just blacked out. Mm. There we go. So can I just drop it here? Ah, I see. I get a bonus, and it jumps to the nearest pad. Okay, right. Okay, yeah. And I've taken too long. So enemy ships has come to hurry me along. Yeah, this is this is more more addictive than uh, the Hanamex. Space Squadron. But yeah, you do wonder, I mean, like with a, with a lot of these platforms, well first of all you kind of wonder what would have been achieved had these other platforms, oh dear, I think I just shot that. <laughs> what would have been achieved, you know, had some of these other platforms had the same amount of... Mm. Um, Just allowed one of them to be dragged to the top and drop the other one. See, that's that's actually there's a little there's a little thing here that is different from the, the arcade version. In the arcade, I'm pretty sure you could you could get right to the top of the screen and run along and and sh fire, right. and you'd hit the alien before it can it changed into a mutant like an alien carrying a human you know you'd, you'd be able to hit it at the very top of the screen mm -hmm. in that split second before it, it it turned into a mutant but on this like it almost turns into a mutant as it hits the top of the screen and so you're firing just above it right and you never you never get it before before it changes and it's too late so actually You'd need to position. Obviously, it's much easier to position your your ship at the very top. You just you know fly upwards until you can't until it stops going up. Mm -hmm. Do you get some indication that one of the guys has been picked up? Yeah, you can or... see it on the on the radar. You see the right. Right. So I'm looking at the radar to see, uh -huh. see if there if there's one that's close enough to go after. Basically. And these things, and I think in the original, oh, see this one's picked one up. Can you see it? So normally I go to the top and I'd fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like this and be able to get it, even slightly off screen. Yeah. Before it, before it changed. You know, when the when the aliens take the uh, take the humans to the top of the screen, they, uh, yeah. they turn into the mutants. And you can see what I mean about the flickering. And uh, so the the mutants in Defender change colour. They they they, mm. they mm. flicker, change colours. Um, uh, Quite a nice effect, it seems. Yeah. So there you go. That's Defender, Defender Two. Yeah, you wonder, like, w w is the Hanamex capable of doing something, uh, you know, actually, that has all of the elements of Defender? It's a bit like, it's like a cargo cult game, you know. It sort of has, it has the features of Defender, but it, but it's just not, not nowhere near Defender. The features don't hang together, you know. It's got the scrolling landscape yeah. at the bottom, but that's supposed to be populated with humans. They're supposed to be defending the humans, and the, the aliens are supposed to... They're supposed to flicker and behave like that, but only after they've taken a human up to the top of the screen. Um, and yeah, you have a you have a, a radar, but that radar serves a purpose. It doesn't just show you where the aliens are. It shows you where different you know different things are. In, in the arcade, especially, the important things that it showed you was not just the aliens and the humans, but 
um, where the motherships were because there's there's motherships that when you hit them they burst into like a swarm of little tiny red red fighters um, okay and that's really what the smart bombs were for so the top players would like okay. they would launch yeah. through the through the level usually the motherships would all spawn in roughly the same area and they get really really good at flying at high speed and hitting smart bomb as the the largest number of motherships were on screen at the time that they hit it because it would basically annihilate everything that was uh it was on screen and, and nothing that wasn't um and i think if i remember rightly you had to do so either they had to shoot the motherships and then hit the smart bomb to destroy the swarms or they had to hit smart bomb or the smart bomb annihilated the motherships including the swarms or possibly they had to hit the smart bomb twice on two passes one to destroy the motherships but open the swarming fighters right. and then again to destroy the fighters i can't quite I remember, don't which remember way ever seeing any of that. you don't remember what i don't remember ever seeing any of that the motherships or the swarms or anything yeah they were they were quite small they were difficult to hit and then when they mm. When they exploded, they exploded into these, these really even smaller little red ships that swarmed around and were, were dangerous. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I was, you know, I played Defender quite a lot, but I was never like an elite Defender player. I watched a lot of very good Defender players, though. And. You know, the, the best players would play for eight, you know, for a long time because they would they would just store up so many extra lives and, and smart bombs. You'd, you'd see them with just like rows of. Uh, oh look, that was taking up. Long time. All the human on the top of the screen. I see. Oh. Oh. If you can't have him, no. <laughs> <laughs> He would, have, he would have wanted it that way. Yeah. <laughs> Kill me. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's, a, that's another question. Um, if Derek, if you're still there, um, how much Defender did you play? When you were when you asked to do this, or you know, I mean, obviously Munch and Crunch is a Pac-Man clone. I don't know how much how much Pac-Man you played? Oh, is he is, is he not there anymore? Uh, he is. He's on mute though. Derek, you're on mute. Oh. There you go. You should be off mute now. Right. Don't know how that happened. <laughs> Have you been talking the whole time? You've just been jabbering on. Or you haven't heard you. Yeah. No. I, I've been. I've been. I've been watching most of the time. But I was talking to you about. Uh, you asked how much, much I played, yeah. and really the answer is not a lot. Um, oh. Okay. I've lost all my humans. I was always I've much. I've just lost all my humans. You see that? So the landscape's gone now, and I'm in a. Yeah, the, the earth is destroyed, everything's a mutant, everything's after me, everything's much more aggressive. Yeah, so I'm dead. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that was the first time that had happened, that I'd actually lost all of my humans. So that's what happens oh. when you lose, okay. lose everyone. Yeah, sorry, you were saying you didn't play you didn't play these games very much. Yeah, no, I was really much always much more interested in the in the programming aspects than the, the playing. Mm. Um, I don't know if we had. I can't remember if we had a twenty six hundred in the shop. We probably did to to try, and we'd sometimes go out to an arcade and see what we could find. Um, but there's a limited amount of what you can learn about the game. Yeah, from playing uh, it, you have to just just by playing yeah. it uh, a few times. Um, you know, the, the resources you've got today, you know, you can go go online, you can find 
videos of people playing. You can find answers to all sorts of things. I was just reading here on Atari Age about how to activate your smart bombs and stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, how do you do it? <laughs> uh, you, uh, you, you fly down behind the city and press the red controller button. Oh, really? And that's what it says here. Oh, let's go. Okay. So if I go down to the bottom of the screen... You have to go right to the bottom, apparently. Is, is this Defender 2 or Defender? Uh, okay, that oh, says on. Defender. No, it's not, it's not doing it. No, okay. Um, yeah, it does just say Defender here. Um, well, I'll tell you what, that's... We can, we can, we can it, try. Somebody, somebody is asking if uh, Defender 2 uses a second controller. Mm. Um, and somebody's confirmed yes. Okay, so it's the fire button on the second controller then, probably. Yes, yeah. Let me... Um... Just for completion's sake, see if we can do this. So, so this was the first offender. So this is defender, yeah. So if I go to the bottom of the screen here, oh, without crashing into one of my humans. Ah, yeah, did you see that? How weird, look. You've got this sort of interface between the, the bottom of the city, so I'm just spinning down consistently and it stops momentarily there and then it goes below. That's weird. And then when I hit the, hit the fire button, I lose a smart bomb and everything everything blows up. But yeah, this so this is this is a really indication of you know, how things weren't much more advanced than the Hanamex mm. initially. But obviously that I mean Defender Two on the twenty six hundred is famous for being pushing the limits of what the machine was capable of. I mean, I think we've all got to see why. Oh! Is this so fast, though? It's really fast. Um, yes, I'm still here. Hey, Flynn. Are you saying cool? Oh, look, look. Yes. Taking a... Yes, I am, in fact, still here. <laughs> what do you think of this? Did you watch any of, the, any of Defender 2? I didn't watch your stream on I'm on Zoom. You can you can see the stream though, can't you on Zoom? You should be able to watch it. Yeah. Yes. I'm watching you. Did you watch did you watch me play Defender 2? Did you watch that bit? Probably not. I was busy doing stuff with <coughs> nerf guns. Okay. Never mind then. Okay, here, here's one post uh, that somebody's written about Defender 2. He's modified the uh, joystick and put a second uh, button on the side of it right. uh, with another another wire coming out to go into the other port. Right. Nice. Okay. That's cool. So some, someone, yeah, wanted to play it so badly they actually modified the joystick to it. <laughs> oh, I like yeah, I mean, I can't, I, I, I can't imagine how you would do that easily. I guess you'd have to have it sat by your side and yeah. whack. No, you, you, have put, you have to put your foot on it. It's your big toe. <laughs> yeah. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> oh. That's what your friend's for. You get your friend yeah. to activate. Smart bomb, smart bomb. And then you have a big argument. Co pilot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's right. Wingman. <laughs> Oh, that's interesting. That that um alien 
just uh, just took a human to the top of the screen, but didn't seem to turn turn into a mutant. Hmm. Hello, Cato. It's a cat there. It's quite, um, quite staggering, actually, the difference between this version and the second one. Isn't it? What? I mean, for all of the talk about you know the great. Oh look, I've managed to return it. For all for, about the great you know video game crash of 1983. It didn't half still. I'll make do some, right back. Okay. It didn't half make some uh, amazing games after that. Hmm. Hmm. Radar at the top is completely useless. <laughs> oh, someone's knocking at the door. The front door? Oh, it's you. Of course it is. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> you okay? Mm, the idea. Hmm? I'd knock on the thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Who beat us? Do you want to have a go? No, no. There they go. Yep. Yeah. Point and shoot. Alive, you're still going. Yeah. Thanks. Done. Okay. All right. Well, I think. This is very hot in here. Yeah. I, I th think. I think that's probably as much defender as we can we can take this morning. <laughs> um. Anybody got anything else they'd like to comment on? Or it's been quite fun to see these with different versions. One person viewing. Mm -hmm. Who do be that person? I don't know. Is it someone on Twitch? I don't know. Everybody's gone from uh, from viewing on uh, Twitch and YouTube to actually being on the Zoom call, so we can have a conversation <laughs> with each other, which is really nice. Um, Lee and Derek on the Zoom. And you, of course. Yeah. All right. So there you go. Uh, that's that's the last Hanimex. Stop it, please. That's the last Hanimex game that I've got. Mm -hmm. um, so it's probably oh, the. Really? Yeah. So that's the last Hanimex game we're going to try out for a little while, at least until we can get a. A multi cart solution sorted out. Can I go down, please? Hmm? Can I go to his room and get him on? Do you want to say something? Yeah. Okay. There you go. Hello. Hello, Flynn Bobs. Hi, Flynn. Hello. Do you want to come over here or get someone to see? So, what do you think of this game then, Flynn? It's hard, or I'm just bad at it. I think it looks very hard. Not as hard as the uh, Hanamex one, though. I was <laughs> even was worse fun. at the Hanamex one. Well, that's because it's really hard. That's all I got. I got nothing. Okay. All right, then. Yeah, so I don't know what, I'm, what we're going to do next week. We're out of Hanamex games. Um, hopefully, by then, I'll have uh, sorted out. Um, Yeah, you're ending it with me, don't worry. Um, yeah, hopefully I'll be able to have sorted out a composite modification to one of the um, 1292 consoles hmm. by next week, and we can try that out. Um, also, though, I might I might just get the video pack out. We might just do a little video pack stream. I don't know. What, what do you think, Derek? Would you be What would you be interested in? Oh, whatever. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. I'm open to, to watching anything that's going on. Good. Can I turn down the heat?
Okay. Yeah, it's hot in here, isn't it? Okay. All right, we'll leave it there. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. That was, uh, okay, that was a bit you, mad. Chris. Cheers. Mad Thanks. It was great to have crazy. you on, Derek. <laughs> See you all. Cheers, Lee. Bye bye. Thanks, Flynn. <laughs> Thanks for your contributions, Flynn. Bye. <laughs> See you, everyone. Bye. Like and subscribe. <laughs>